Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and can you believe we are nearing the end of 2021 already? Because frankly, I cannot, but here we are. So today I'm going to begin recapping this year by going ahead and spotlighting some of the house plants that I would consider to be the best plant purchases that I made this year. So these are just some plants that you've probably seen earlier this year in my house plant haul videos if you watch them, uh, but these are the ones that have really captured my heart throughout this year and I really just wanted to go ahead and give them the spotlight once again. So the first one I would like to talk about today is, let's talk about this lovely one right here. So this is a plant I have tried a couple times in the past. I believe this is my third attempt, but you know what they say, third time's a charm. So this is my Hoya Curtisii. And you might recall this if you watch my house plant haul videos. I believe I got this one in the summertime, late summertime. And I purchased this one as a four inch hanging basket. While it was a full hanging basket, uh, you can see really how tremendously it has grown for me over these past couple months, which is something I am not used to when it comes to Hoya. I know I talk a lot about Hoya here on my channel and I often say how slow growing they are, especially at first when you first bring them home. So normally I bring a Hoya home, I'll leave it in its plastic container unless it's in like a really heavy loamy soil, then I'll go ahead and repot it in something else. Uh, but I'll usually let it be to acclimate to my home and uh, they'll usually do nothing for the first growing season if not two years I've definitely had have some Hoyas currently that I've had for like two going on three years that have done absolutely nothing for me this is fortunately not one of those though so this Hoya Curtisii I've been growing near one of my east facing windows in my home I have it hanging up as you can see it's in this hanging planter here and I went ahead and bravely potted it up in this planter because I started to notice that it was growing and we were still in the growing season so I potted it up and it's really just filled out so much. You can see the way the leaves are kind of almost like hugging their way around this planter. It's really gorgeous. And all of these runners that are just running for days, it's like they're running a marathon, but they're uh, just such long vines that I, like I said, I'm just not used to this with my Hoyas, especially in the first year of growing them. So I've been thrilled to grow this one. It's been much easier this time around. In fact, I had like a strand of an old Hoya Curtisi when I brought this one home and as soon as it started really just uh, jumping into action, I decided to go ahead and pawn that one off on a friend who can enjoy it themselves because this one is really just giving me enough enjoyment. And on top of that, you can kind of see from the east facing light that, which is normally a kind of bright and direct light, but because I do live kind of higher up in my building, so the light is pretty much unobstructed and it's just, coming in all day until the mid-afternoon, so uh, it is quite strong, especially now that this, we're entering the winter months and the sun's getting a little bit lower in the sky, so it's really just blaring in here. But you can see that this plant is getting some really nice sun stress to the leaves, so the leaves get kind of purple, and what was normally silver gets kind of this lime green color and it really stands out, so I just really enjoy that. This is a really beautiful Hoya. I'm thrilled that I'm able to grow it now because if this attempt didn't go very well, I probably would have written it off as a Hoya that I just can't grow, but this one is really stunning. I'm really obsessed with it. 100% one of my uh, new favorite Hoyas, especially because of my newfound success with it. That's definitely a major reason why, but uh, that's just so full. Total like string of hearts vibe, which is, you know, a plant that I go way back with, so. I'm really, really fond of that one now. And another Hoya, this is actually the newest plant for me. I don't think I've ever featured this one in the video because I just got it. And this might be a cop out because I didn't technically pay for this. This is a gift from one of my friends, but I, it's so gorgeous. I wanted to spotlight it. So this is a Hoya Pachycleta. This is a rather new one on the market. I would say just as this year is when I've been noticing this one um, at a bunch of houseplant stores, but I just never went ahead and picked one up. I don't know why. I just never found the one that was speaking to me but recently my friend gifted me a cutting of one of hers and this is this is quite the cutting right here i will admit and it's really got some funky leaves it kind of reads more like a peperomia or a clusia to me than it does a hoya and the older leaves on this plant i guess when it was grown in the greenhouse are just like so super thick they still are pretty thick up at the newer leaves but you can tell how much potential this plant has to be just like a super succulent Hoya. So really been enjoying this, but like I said, just gives me such a different vibe than many of the other Hoyas that I grow on my home, which is why it's really been standing out to me. I grow it on my shelf back here. Like I said, it's only been there for like a week or two at this point, so don't have any care tips, uh, but I just really love the way that it just sits there with these huge leaves just poking out at you. So 
wish me luck with this plant. Like I said, can't say anything about it, but this is just really standing out to me because of its different appearance to many of the other Hoyas. I can imagine that this is one that many beginner gardeners could be pretty unfazed by and think it's a boring house plant, dare I say. But to know Hoya is to love Hoya, and I'm really loving the nuances that this plant has in comparison to other Hoyas and other plants that I'm aware of. And in due time, as all Hoyas do, this will eventually bloom for me as long as I'm caring for it correctly, knock on wood. But as I keep saying, I really just need to get to know this plant a little bit better. Two weeks is uh, not enough time whatsoever to get to know a house plant at all uh, but that's probably why it's featured in today's video because we're still in the honeymoon period so yeah i'm just really enjoying this hoya and i want to spotlight today because like i said it's a new house plant for 2021 and 2021's almost over so what's going to be next what's going to be the new hoyas and other house plants that we're going to see next year we'll wait and see another one that i'm really excited about this year which Hasn't done too much for me yet, which is to be expected as it's a Sansevieria or Drusena if you're a diehard. So this is a Sansevieria Pinguicula. I'm questioning whether or not I'm pronouncing that correctly. But I was so excited about this Sansevieria because uh, I saw this one at the Philadelphia Flower Show. If you're familiar, they do a competition every year where uh, people in the area will... Uh, submit their houseplants into the contest and then they're basically rated on I don't know what they all look beautiful to me They all are winners to me, but some of them win some of them don't uh, But I would see every year these Sansevieria pinguiculas, which this is a horrible example of Sansevieria pinguicula uh, Because this doesn't have any of the pups So you can kind of see with my Sansevieria here how it's kind of coming up and out of the soil So it's got kind of these roots that are going down and ingraining itself into the soil holding this plant up and uh, as this plant forms babies or offshoots, those babies start to come up really high and they'll be like a foot above the planter and they'll just have these roots climbing down. So they call this the walking Sansevieria or snake plant commonly because the babies look as if they are walking away from the mother plant, which is just so cool. So as I said, this is not really a great example of this house plant, but that's nothing that a quick Google search can't solve for you. But I just had to give this one a try. I've seen it so many times, it's really caught my eye uh, at the flower show. So I figured it was time to give it a go. I think I purchased this one on Etsy. I don't think it was that expensive. I think it was like $25 to $30, which in the grand scheme of things, with the way that house plants have been going on the market, that is a very good deal. I know that just a couple years ago, all house plants were like four or five dollars, but um, in today's climate, that's a fantastic deal for a very slow growing collector house plant, in my opinion. So, uh, in due time, I'm looking forward to seeing this one produce babies, but. Um, for now, I'm just gonna be really patient. I was growing it on my grow light shelf here behind me for some time, but now I've been thinking that maybe some more natural light will be doing it some justice, some more justice. So I'm moving it over, or I moved it over to one of my east facing windows, and I'm actually just seeing now. You can see this little spike here coming up, so that's some new growth, so perhaps it's responding, even though I just moved it a week or two ago, but hey, maybe that's enough time. Uh, <laughs> I will say with this, if you have like children or clumsy pets, I would consider putting this somewhere far away from where they can reach. This is a pointy plant. I have scratched myself on this thing reaching by. Uh, the tips do like break easily enough. I don't think it would be like a fatal hazard, dare I say. I shouldn't even be saying that, but uh, just be careful. Be careful with this plant. It's very sharp. A lot of Sansevierias have some pretty sharp tips, but these ones in particular, I think, could be a real hazard. So just something to bear in mind. I know this house plant's really cool, so I'm sure a lot of people would want to try growing it eventually. Just put it somewhere safe. And another one I'm really excited about that I feel like no one else is going to be excited about is this Aglianema modestum. And I know you probably thought when I first pulled this up that this is just a plain old peace lily. And I totally hear you. It totally gives that vibes. And that's everything that I love about this houseplant. If you watch me here on YouTube, you know that I find enjoyment in some of the most plain houseplants. I love a plain green houseplant. There is just nothing more classic than a plain green houseplant. And I love Aglianemas, Chinese evergreens is the, the common name for them. Uh, they are really incredible houseplants. They are like the leafiest, most foliage houseplants that I push into the darkest corners of my home. And they thrive uh, most of the time. Uh, but this one just lacks all of that 
incredible pattern that you see in the other aglinemas, but that's what I love about this one. You don't ever see aglinemas that are just plain green. And that's probably why this one isn't on the market because it doesn't flower like a pea silly does. There's really nothing remarkable about it unless you're a fan of aglinemas. So that's basically my really long explanation of trying to give this plant um, the clout that it deserves because it's really just so fun. Like, you can't tell me that this isn't just so fun. And it's just going to continue growing like all other Chinese evergreens and just form a little cane and grow up higher and higher. I'm sure this plant won't probably hold on to more to than six to eight leaves at a time because of the way that all my aglinemas go. Also, keeping in mind, as I say pretty often, that this is not a plant that's common in cultivation. Uh, and whether that's because it is boring, dare I say. I don't think it's boring, but I'm sure many of you do. Uh, or the fact that it's maybe not the easiest houseplant to grow. Like, like I said, maybe it doesn't hold on to leaves as well as some of the other aglinemas that are a little bit more cultivated for that matter. But regardless, I love this houseplant. I've found some pretty good luck with it so far. I have it just sitting in some very uh, barky mix. I'm using the repot me mix that I use in my home mixed with some of the repot me orchid bark, if you're curious, and it's been doing fantastic so far. Only put off one leaf for me, but I've had it for like three months, maybe two months. I have no idea. I have not had it long, and I will take one leaf. It's still holding on to the other three, so that's good enough for me. Aglinemas, I often bring them home, and the first thing they do is drop like three leaves. It's kind of sad, but normally they will pick up the pace and they will look good as new in a couple months, but this one's being pretty reliable for me right now. But like I always say, two, three months is not nearly enough time to get to know a houseplant. I think you need a full growing season with a houseplant to truly get to know how it grows. Uh, sometimes even longer than that, I'm talking about my Hoyas that have been doing nothing for two or three years. But I'm excited about any Aglinema. I'm a big fan of Chinese evergreens and I just love seeing new ones on the market. And although a lot of the ones with patterns look very the same, you, no one can tell me that this plain green one uh, has another similar Aglinema on the market because none of them look like this one. So love Aglinema Modestum. Give it a little bit more screen time because it's really incredible. I got that one from Glass Houseworks, if you're familiar. I did a Glass Houseworks unboxing earlier this year, as I feel like I've done for the past couple years. So this one is very closely related to Hoya's. This is my Discidia, and I'm going to call this Discidia oeantha variegata. I have seen countless comments that Discidia oeantha is not a real plant, so I think this does have a different name, but that was what the tag said when I bought this plant, and that's what it sold as on the market, so that's just what I'm gonna call it today. But feel free to let me know in the comments what this plant is actually called. I am actually kind of curious. Uh, this is a very slow-growing houseplant. Uh, Discidias or Dishidias, whatever you wanna say, like I said, are very closely related to Hoyas. They're in the same family, so they do have kind of a similar behavior to them where they don't grow as fast when you first bring them home. Uh, but I find that Discidia thrive a little bit more on neglect than Hoyas do. Hoyas, while they like to dry out and they need a well-draining soil, they don't want to sit dry for too long. I kind of find that Dishidias or Dyskidia really enjoy that setting. So I have this one actually hanging up in one of my windows right next to another Dyskidia. And I let them go for probably like a full month before I water them. I shouldn't be doing that. I should probably be watering them like every two or three weeks. But... I'm kind of forgetful with that corner and I just let them be and they do totally fine. Uh, they, this one has put off a little bit of new growth for me, not incredibly much compared to the other Dyskidia, but I haven't had this one for longer than a year, which is why it's being, you know, spotlighted in today's video, makes sense. So it also makes sense that this hasn't done too much for me, but in due time, I hope that it'll form an even more full waterfall of plant. But I purchased this one particularly because I was pretty enamored by this situation like this is how i bought this house plant it was sold in this hanging basket i got this from Otz, i'm pretty sure which is a local philadelphia destination greenhouse and i don't know if this is something that they potted up themselves i'm assuming that they bought it in like this but this is something i've never seen personally back when i was in my days as a buyer so it really just caught my eye and i had to bring it home with me and it was a really good deal this was like 25 dollars I do not often see Hoyas or Dyskidias sold in this abundance in that price range, so it just seemed like a no-brainer that I had to go and bring it home with me. But it's just so gorgeous. I really love this houseplant. I really love anything that's a trailing houseplant, but this just gives such just 
a fun like symmetrical vibe with the way that these leaves are hanging down with there's two at every node i just really love it and the color is really interesting too i'm not usually like a sucker for variegated house plants but this is some pretty interesting variegation with the way it's got kind of a mix of like the cream around the edge and kind of this like mottled streak to the leaves so i find some real good enjoyment out of this house plant but like i keep saying it really hasn't grown too much so I will just be hanging on for it to decide when it wants to grow a little bit more, but perhaps I should consider watering it just a little bit more often and I will probably get a little bit more uh, back from this houseplant. You know, you, you only get from your houseplants what you give to them. So I should take note there and give this one a little bit more attention. Maybe that'll be my new year's resolution. <laughs> and the last houseplant I'm gonna talk about today is this philodendron Florida. I want to call it Florida. The place where I purchased this from did not call it Philodendron Florida. I, I think they called it Philodendron Jungle Fever. I got this one from the like roaming uh, plant market, Petal is what it's called, that goes around Philadelphia. I think they also go to New York City. But uh, this is a really fun philodendron. You don't normally see this one on the market, or at least until recently. Uh, but the roaming plant market has often had some pretty interesting house plants that I don't normally see elsewhere. And this is one of them. And their prices can't be beat. I think I purchased this six inch pot of philodendron for, it was like 25, maybe $28, but there was no way it was more than $28. That is as high as it was, which is a very good deal because if you've seen any of my come house plant shopping with me videos where we have seen these plants in the past, I don't think I've ever seen these for less than three digits, so that is a very good deal. I am a really big fan of these plants with this leaf shape. I've talked a lot in the past in my top 10 house plants or my favorite house plant videos. I know that these plants, these philodendrons with these lobed leaves and just really funky leaf shapes have always ended up on top and that's good reason. They're just so cool. They're really cool. And there are so many philodendrons that have this similar leaf shape. There's philodendron pedatum, there's philodendron squamiferum, philodendron florida ghost is one that has this same exact structure, just they come in with these white leaves, which is a little bit more of a gimmicky house plan. I probably would recommend going for the other three that I just mentioned, but whatever floats your boat, I am cool with. You can spend your money on whatever. But the main difference between all of these philodendrons that I am mentioning today is actually their petiole, which is quite interesting. You don't normally have plants that are uh, remarkably different on their petioles. And if you're unaware, a petiole is the little stem thing that connects a leaf to the main stem. So you can see this red thing right here is the petiole. And the petiole on this one is red, as you can see, and it's also kind of bumpy. So I believe this one is a hybrid. I could be wrong, but I believe this is a hybrid plant of philodendron squamiferum and another philodendron that sports this very similar leaf shape. Uh, and philodendron squamiferum has these super fuzzy red petioles, but I believe that the other parent plant has just plain green smooth petioles. So just a, a few differences that you'll see there. So I'm sure that if you're shopping for houseplants online or in store and you see a houseplant with these leaves, as long as that's what you're looking for, that's gonna fit the bill. But if you are looking to get a little bit more character out of your houseplants, you might wanna notice the petioles to see all the different differences that those plants carry. So just something I think is pretty interesting. But uh, this philodendron's been very easy for me. I have been growing another philodendron Florida in my home for like two years now. And that one's been very slow growing. I did cut it a couple times, so that kind of checks out. But this one has put off these beautiful leaves, at least these three, if not four, since I brought it home. You can see this one old leaf is getting a little tired in the sense that it's like a little like folded. It's a little flaccid. I don't know exactly what's going on with it there. It, could you be just getting a little bit tired? It was, like I said, it was also one that was growing in the greenhouse when I purchased it. So maybe it's just not obsessed with the conditions that my home has, but these new leaves are totally acclimated to my space and they're doing quite fine. Uh, this philodendron though, I will say the new leaves, I always am keeping a mind out for pests. Uh, they're really like folded up in really intricate ways since they have all of these different lobes and protrusions that come off the leaves. So there's a lot of spaces for pests to hide in when these leaves are still unfurling. So like a new leaf coming in is like this one right here. It's very young and still has a lot of developing to do, but just so you can see for kind of an example. 
So just one thing to keep in mind there, but these fill dungeons are so cool. And as I am proving to you, basically, you can find these for a good price. I know nine times out of 10, these might be a ridiculous price online, but in due time, or if you strike out, you will be able to find one of these lovely fill dungeons for a very good deal. Or you can always trade house plants. That is always an excellent way to go ahead and get some more wonderful plants in your home. But that's gonna do it for today's video. My favorite plant purchases of this year or my best plant purchases, just to recap quickly, I talked about this Hoya Curtisii, really one of my favorite Hoyas now. I'm so thrilled that that one's been growing well for me now. Hoya Pachycleta, which I mentioned is the newest houseplant in my home, which is probably why it's in today's video, but don't blame me there, I'm sure you all understand. Sansevieria pinguicula, the walking Sansevieria, although this one is still kind of crawling. Aglaonema modestum, the most exciting house pen on planet Earth. I know you are all thinking that right now. Dyskidia, uh, Oeantha variegata, like I said, let me know the real name of this house plant if you are aware. And last, but most certainly not least, as its track record in my videos would uh, scream to you, is this philodendron Florida, question mark. Like I said, the grower called this philodendron jungle fever, so I don't want to just assume that's not the plant, but this looks a lot more like a philodendron Florida to me. So also, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. But thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.